Scientists think our solar system looks like a croissant. Here are the details. Last year, scientists at the DRIVE Science Center determined that the bubble around our solar system may be shaped like a giant croissant. This is because, according to Science Alert, solar winds and radiation pouring out from the sun are shaped by the interaction of the solar magnetic field with the interstellar magnetic field and form a protective bubble to shield us from powerful cosmic radiation known as the heliosphere. The traditional view of the heliosphere is that it is shaped like a comet's tail, but new modeling found it had two jets curling away from the central bulbous area like a deflated croissant. Now, in the Astrophysical Journal, the same scientists have explained the reason for this is that neutral hydrogen atoms streaming in from outside the solar system and interacting with ionized matter in the heliosphere cause a Rayleigh-Taylor instability, where two fluids of different densities meet and cause the lighter fluid to push into the heavier one, producing turbulence. The team used data from the Voyager probes, which have traveled outside the heliosphere and are currently making their way through interstellar space to make their calculations. NASA's Voyager 2 crossed into interstellar space in November of 2018 after a 41-year voyage, but its mission is far from over. According to research published in the journal Astrophysical Letters, as Voyager 2 moves farther from our solar system, the density of space is increasing. This supports findings from Voyager 1, which entered interstellar space at a different location in 2012. The solar system's theoretical boundary is called the heliopause. An article published on NASA's website describes the heliopause as the place where the solar wind, which emanates from our sun, is no longer strong enough to push back interstellar winds from the surrounding stars. Inside is the heliosphere, a huge bubble of the sun's magnetic influence made by the solar wind that extends far beyond Pluto. This bubble was thought to be shaped like a comet with a rounded leading edge and tail as it orbits the Milky Way. The heliospheric nose is situated between the two voyagers. But a study published in the journal Nature Astronomy in March using data from NASA missions suggests the heliosphere may in fact be shaped like a deflated croissant. A 3D simulation created using the data shows a curving central bulge with two jets caused by the solar magnetic field shooting away from it. The authors of the study write that the increase in density detected by the Voyager spacecraft could be due to interstellar magnetic fields becoming stronger as they approach and drape over the heliopause. Another theory is that the material blown by the interstellar wind might slow down and build up as it approaches the heliopause. The latest data sent from Voyager 2 brought new insight and questions about the boundary region where the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins. According to NASA, the Sun's energetic influence projects a bubble around the solar system called the heliosphere, according to Reuters. NASA reports that as Voyager 2 crossed the border region, or the heliopause, it registered an unexpectedly sharp difference in magnetic particles and plasma density. Comparing the data from Voyager 1, researchers found the heliopause is thinner and less changeable by solar cycles than thought previously, according to the New York Times. The Times reports the Sun creates the heliosphere bubble by blowing solar wind, or charged particles that are mostly hydrogen. University of Iowa professor Don Garnett told the Times that solar winds clash with interstellar winds in the bubble's outer region, which could explain why a sharp boundary was formed. NASA reports that its record-breaking space probe, the New Horizons, has reached another impressive milestone. On April 17th, the half-ton craft became only the fifth man-made machine to fly more than 50 astronomical units into deep space. That's 50 times the distance from Earth to the Sun, for a total of 7.5 billion kilometers from Earth. At that distance, it takes commands sent from Earth at the speed of light, a whopping 7 hours to reach the probe, and scientists have to wait another 7 hours to hear if the probe received the commands. Launched in 2006, the New Horizons is much newer than Earth's other deep space probes. The two Voyager and two Pioneer spacecraft launched between 1972 and 1977. At a traveling speed of 58,000 kilometers per hour, it is also the fastest machine ever made. New Horizons became the first probe to study the distant planet of Pluto and the first to study objects in the Kuiper Belt, a huge disk of mostly ice chunks that ring the outer reaches of our solar system. It also filmed the first video of an off-Earth volcano when it flew by Jupiter's moon, Io. Live Science reports that Voyager 2 detected a fiery plasma wall in the heliopause, where the sun's outward-blowing solar winds clash with cosmic rays. This barrier protects the solar system by repulsing and weakening cosmic rays. Citing NASA, Live Science reports that Voyager 1 could not detect the wall because its sensors malfunctioned. However, as Voyager 2 crosses the heliopause, it found holes in the protective shell and temperatures twice as high as past models predicted. 
According to the BBC, the sun's energies charge particles into an ionized plasma state and shoot them out to form solar winds and the heliopause. The European Space Agency Solar Orbiter has been given the rare opportunity to conduct some bonus science in a serendipitous rendezvous with the tails of the comet Atlas during the next few days. The Solar Orbiter was launched on February 10, 2020, and is en route to the inner solar system to study the sun and inner heliosphere. The encounter with Atlas had not been planned. Atlas was discovered on December 28, 2019. During the next few months, it grew brighter at such a surprising rate that astronomers thought it might become visible to the naked eye in May. Unfortunately, the comet broke up in early April as it drew closer to the sun and fragmented further in mid-May. However, also in May, Geraint Jones of the UK's Mullard Space Science Laboratory discovered that the spacecraft would pass through the comet's tails as early as May 31st. The instruments used to study Atlas were not scheduled to be fully functional until the probe's first solar observation on June 15th, as detailed in an article on the space agency's website. ESA scientists moved that timeline forward to begin collecting data when the probe passed through Atlas's ion tail, which points directly away from the sun on May 31st and June 1st. The solar orbiter will cross Atlas's dust tail, a trail of dust and gas left in the comet's orbit, on June 6th. Comets are made of dust, frozen water, ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. A comet's dust tail is formed by particles that have been blown from the comet by the sun's radiation. The ion tail is made of charged particles that are pushed away from the sun by the solar wind. The ESA's solar orbiter was to take readings from the ion tail using its solar wind plasma analyzer. It will analyze particles from the dust tail using its radio and plasma waves instruments. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.